I thought this would be a toy, but look what this $500 CNC pulled off on its very first run. No build, no mess. I had it running in five minutes. But here's the question. Is this a legit starter CNC or a $500 mistake? I threw real projects at it. Some things blew me away and some didn't. By the end of this video, you'll know if the Cubico deserves a space in your shop or if it's just a paperweight. I wanted to see how it handles real materials. So before I show you plastics, I tried one of the most popular little projects out there right now, a wooden bourbon smoker. I made mine out of white oak, which gave me a great way to test the power and rigidity of the machine. All right, let's dig into the Jimitsu Cubico and talk about what makes this little machine stand out. Most sub $500 CNC's come as a box of parts, hours of bolting, wiring, and setup. The Cubico skips all of that. You pull it out, set it on a desk, plug it in, and you're ready to cut. And because it's enclosed, it feels safe and approachable, not like a loud open frame router throwing chips everywhere. This looks like something you could run in a classroom, a home office, or even an apartment. We actually tested this out to know exactly how loud it was, and this is what we found. It's basically as loud as a hair dryer. At its core, it's a CNC router with a 75 watt spindle that tops out around uh, 10,000 RPMs. That's strong enough to cut, albeit very slow, and engrave wood, plastics, and even softer metals like aluminum. Engraving is where this machine thrives though. But it's not just a router. You can swap modules for laser engraving, PCB milling, even drawing and polishing. One day you're carving a sign, the next you're etch etching leather, later you're milling a circuit board, all from the same machine. So there are a lot of possibilities here. Here are a few features that stand out to me to make it easy for beginners to get started. Auto Z probing, so no guessing tool height. A built-in screen and onboard controller, so you don't even need a separate computer to operate it. The enclosed design makes it a lot less intimidating and messy. I exported my G-code and saved it to a micro SD card, plugged it into the machine, and ran it from the onboard controller. If you want more control, you can hook it up to UGS or Candle on a computer, or even use the Jimitsu app to run it from your phone. So there are several options here, which I found really nice. That said, the onboard controller took a little getting used to. For example, I have no idea why the side to side buttons don't work, only the up and down buttons, unless you're jogging the machine, then they work, but you can't manually jog the Z. I'm sure there's a reason for this, but it took me a while to figure out. One quick tip though is I added a sacrificial piece of wood on top of the metal wasteboard so I could cut clean through projects. I just used double-sided tape to attach it, which makes it super easy to replace once it gets tore up. So who should actually consider this machine? Well, I thought of a few people. So hobbyists and makers who wanna try CNC without dedicating a lot of money or space to it. Students and educators who need something compact and safe to learn CNC. And small business owners or Etsy sellers who wanna add custom engraving to their products without spending thousands. And anyone short on space, apartments, dorms, or small shops. But here's who it's not for. If you're a serious woodworker cutting large projects or furniture parts, this isn't it. It has a six by four inch work area. Think coasters, jewelry, not cabinets. If you want raw cutting power, this machine isn't it. A 75 watt spindle means light passes. My depth of cut never got over one millimeter. It can engrave aluminum, but not fast and not in production. Also, if you love endless mods and upgrades, the Cubico isn't that type of machine. And if you're trying to run mass production, this isn't your workhorse. It's for prototypes and small orders, not nonstop heavy jobs. If you're thinking, I like it, but I need something bigger and more rigid while still being affordable, stick around because in my next video, I'm showing the Jimitsu 440 Pro Max. That's the next level, larger, stronger, but still under $1,000. All right, so now let's talk money. At the time of making this video, the Cubico is in stock and ready to ship starting at $449. The price goes up from here depending on the package you pick, but everything you see in this video you can get at the 449 price point. A $4,000 machine like a Shapeoko is way more capable, no question. 
but it's also huge, loud, and takes up serious space. The Cubico sits in a different lane. Under 500, you get a compact enclosed CNC that's safe, quiet, and ready to go right out of the box. It's not as powerful as the big machines, but it gives you routing, engraving, and PCB milling in one small package. And while we're on the topic of picking machines, there are a lot of CNCs out there, and it's really confusing to know where to start. My friend Kyle has put together an awesome resource that honestly has been needed for a long time. It's called the CNC Hub. It's a free website that lets you compare CNC routers side by side, read expert reviews, and quickly find the machine that's right for you, based on your budget, machine capabilities, and what you want to make. It'll save you so much time digging through forums and spec sheets trying to figure out what machine is right for you. So check it out at the CNC Hub dot com and take the guesswork out of choosing your next CNC. Here are the results of the bourbon smoker power test. I honestly wasn't sure if this was going to work. That's really cool. You think on a Saturday you could Saturday morning you do this Saturday afternoon you're smoking your bourbon. Now for the engraving accuracy test. I grabbed a sheet of two-tone plastic and set up a V-bit. The goal was simple, cut just deep enough to expose the second color and get the color contrast. I actually made three projects with this material. A football sign showing that the Big Ten is better than the SEC, yep. A Mario sign and a really intricate design that pushed the machine's accuracy. With a little cleanup, every one of these came out looking really cool. The Cubico carved sharp detail. The contrast really popped. For a machine in this price range, I didn't expect that level of precision. But of course, there are trade-offs. The work area is only six by four inches. The spindle is just 75 watts, so you'll need to take light passes. The software is simple and beginner friendly, which is great if you're new to CNC, but advanced users will find it limiting. I've run this machine for about 10 hours so far with multiple jobs lasting over an hour each. And it's held up fine through wood and plastics. I did a little research about longevity and users online are pretty split. Many warn about limited rigidity and say it flexes under even light probing, while others praise its value for small projects and engraving. This makes sense because it all depends on your use case and expectations. What do you want to do with it? That said, long-term durability is still an open question, backed by community feedback. One Reddit user even said, you'll see how probing in Z alone was enough to cause the entire machine to flex. That matches what some people are seeing, while others say they're happy as long as they keep projects light and within the machine's limits, which I totally agree here. But those aren't flaws. They're all trade-offs. This machine isn't built for speed or heavy production. It's built for accessibility fun and ease of use. And in that role, it does really well. All right, after all this, here's where I land. The Jimitsu Cubico is a compact, versatile CNC that makes this technology way more approachable. It's safe, it's relatively quiet, and it can produce detailed projects in wood, plastics, and even light metals. It's a great fit for hobbyists, students, teachers, and small shops. It won't replace a full-size CNC, and it's not meant to, but as an easy, accessible way to get started and have some fun, the Cubico delivers. And as you saw with the two-tone engraving and even the bourbon smoker, it can make projects that look polished and professional, even though the machine itself is about the size of a toaster oven. I think the Cubico would make a great companion to a 3D printer. If I only had $500 and wanted to get into CNC today, this is the machine I'd buy. But if I had $1,000, I'd skip this and go straight to the 440 Pro Max. If you're still wondering if the Cubico is right for you, click right here to watch my review video of the Jimitsu 440 Pro Max. It's about twice the price, but way more capable. Click right here and I will see you in that video. At its core, it's a CNC router with 75 watts hard coal power. <laughs>